Hello there, and welcome to this week's episode of Adding the Alchemy Podcast. My name is Angela. I am one of your co-hosts. And I am Angie. I am your other co-host. Okay, so this week we are going to talk about shifting identities and kind of what we've been going through in each of our lives. We've decided to take this podcast in a little bit of a different direction, and we're just going to start talking about our day-to-day experiences and what we're going through and how we navigate our own lives and in hopes that it helps other people as well. So recently I've been going through a lot of shifts in my life and it kind of started when I decided that I was living in this illusion and I was lying to myself and I was um, not listening to myself. So I kind of was healing little like the things along the way and then I made the decision that I no longer am going to live in this illusion. I stepped away from friends. I stepped away from all of the things that I was doing outside of working and all of that. I stepped away from a lot of that. And I really went within. And I had been stepping away slowly throughout these past many years. But it took a lot of really stepping away from all of the things that made me comfortable, all of the things that I felt comfort in and to sit with myself and just say like, what am I, who am I without anywhere to go, anyone to hang out with, anyone to be, who am I? If I'm just here by myself with none of these to-do lists and none of these um, friends that I need to hang out with or who am I? And that kind of sent me into, I mean, I've cried many times on this, you know, it's, it was kind of like leaving a lot of my past self behind and realizing that the things I was doing and who I was being, you know, these characters that I was playing, the daughter, the sister, the friend, the this, the that, you know, all these things, characters that we play in our lives. I had to look at each of those and say, What in each of those characters do I not want to bring forward in my life? What can I leave behind? You know, and a lot of it was the people pleasing at a whole nother level that I've been through this people pleasing, (laughs) healing hierarchy for a long, long time. And it came to this, you know, just being able to speak my mind and being able to say what I want to say. I had an interesting experience that kind of showed me um, this when I was driving um, with my aunt and uncle. And I said, when I'm a millionaire, I'm going to buy one of these houses. And instantly in the back of my head, my mind was like, you should have said when you're a million, like, like if I'm a millionaire, because, you know, you don't want to like freak anyone out. And, you know, like, what if you don't become a millionaire and all these things. Right. But it, it kind of showed me that, I am now speaking from my authentic self rather than that little voice inside my head. Although that little voice tried to pop up and show me like, hey, it's not safe to say when I'm a millionaire. It's not safe because what if you're not? What if this? What if that? Let's revise that. And I had to really, I had this this going on in my head in the backseat of the car, you know? And so all of those little voices have been like kind of, showing me the way to this new me that I'm trying to create and what do I want to be now so it's like I look here to the left and it's like okay so I was a people pleaser I was and I was this I was that I was this I was that I did these things okay now I'm looking this way what do I want to bring forward what do I want to be known as what do I do I want to be known as anything? Do I, you know, (laughs) so so it's been a real journey of stripping away all of those pieces at a very, very deep level. Cause I've been doing this for years now, stripping away piece by piece. So what about you? What have you been going through? (laughs) Yeah. uh, A very similar process. And, um, a lot of what I got from, from what you just explained, uh, was really a deeper level of an ego death and stripping away, you know, you talked about the roles that you played and being this person or that person. And, and, you know, what do you not want to take with you and what you want to bring in? It's really the authentic version of you that's coming out. Yes. It's, 
it's the the facade fake mask versions of you that are being stripped away and it's the authentic okay. you yeah so one time I was this lady was talking about it as as sweaters how we like as we grow up we're putting on the sweaters and putting on the sweaters and so as we're growing up and like we, we remove it sweater by sweater sweater by so yeah that's kind of yeah what popped into my head yeah yeah. And I, I feel um, it has been a very similar experience for me in the last couple of weeks. And it's been so intense. Um, I had a moment, I don't know at this point, how long ago it was a week or 10 days ago. Um, it was, it was what popped in my head uh, was a scene from Forrest Gump. And uh, hopefully everybody uh, listening and watching has at least seen that film once. Sometimes I date myself when I when I reference uh, <laughs> movies and music. But so when uh, he he's been running, he's running across the country and he just decided I'm going to run and he runs and he runs and he runs. And this has become his entire identity and his existence and you know, he has this whole following and the media and the news and they're making t-shirts for him and all of this stuff. And then one day he just stops and he's like, yeah, I'm done with this. I'm going to go home now. Yep. And that's how, that's how I felt. I just woke up one day and I was like, yeah, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to run anymore. This journey that I have been running and running I don't want to do this anymore. And it it was very intense and very kind of out of nowhere. But there were a series of, of small little situations, I think, that um, brought that about and helped me to, to see some things as well. I had a, a session with another practitioner. Um, and she also assists people who are, who identify as highly sensitive, um, but are also in business and trying to build a business and um, do this whole entrepreneur thing within their highly sensitive energetic bodies. And in this conversation with her, she suggested that I might have a codependent relationship with my business. And I, but my first thought, well, no, I don't think so, because I don't really think that I have enough business at this point to be codependent with it. But then as I sat with that and I really let that sink in and I really started to think about what that meant and and I realized, well, yeah, that's true because it's very much um it has been the energy behind it has very much been see me, hear me, validate me. Um and just constantly seeking that external validation. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I saw that, I saw that very clearly and it, it especially shows up in my relationship with social media, which is, a, I know it's a, it's a really sticky point for a lot of people trying to build a business because it's like, how do you build a business today without social media? But yeah. at the same time, it is, it can be so harmful um, to us in so many ways. And I, I basically boycotted social media, um, for a very long time. I did not, I refused to even get on Facebook until I was oh, probably 41 years old before I even had a Facebook account. And the only reason that I got on there was because I got involved with a, uh, essential oil company and I didn't want to just use the oils. I wanted to attempt to build a business through the oils. So I did what they told me to do, which was you have to get on social media and you have to sell it this way. So I caved in on my whole social media boycott and I got on Facebook, which turned into Instagram. Mm -hmm. And it's it really started um, a very unhealthy relationship with those platforms uh, that has done me more harm than good. And mm -hmm. I, I see that so clearly now. Uh, so that's been a big part of what I have been navigating lately is how do I want to move forward in my business? Do I want to mess with social media at all? Do I just want to completely walk away from it? What does it look like if I totally walk away from it? How does that work? 
it it's been this constant constant struggle um and and a lot of it is that that ego death well if i let this go then who am i and and what am i doing because this is what i've been working towards and building and striving towards and so if i just choose to walk away from this yep then who am i and what does it look like and so it's been a lot of just heavy thoughts and being in the fog of it all and trying to find direction and trying to figure it out. Um, and of course, I, for me, I feel the the current planetary shifts have been a huge part of it. That full moon in Libra, my natal moon is in Libra. So that full moon in Libra was big for me. Uh, also, Jupiter was conjunct Chiron in Aries. My ruling planet is Jupiter and my natal Chiron is in Aries. So that is like a serious tear it all down, start fresh energy yeah. in a big, big way. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's it it's been a lot. And I keep having these different little little experiences um that show me that I that I need I, I do need to shift directions a little bit. I need to let some things go to make room for some new to come in. Um, I need to stop operating from a wounded place mm-hmm. because that whole that whole thing of see me, hear me, validate me that comes from a wounded place. Yeah. And another thing that I realized is just building this business period still to a sense, in a sense, comes from that place of feeling like I have to do something to be worthy. I have to be something to be worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I spent 20 years as a school teacher and okay, well, I'm, I'm a school teacher and that makes me worthy. I'm a good musician and that makes me worthy. Well, I walked away from all of that and now, okay, well, I'm a holistic health practitioner and that makes me worthy and I'm building my business as an entrepreneur and that makes me worthy. So it, it really, I see so clearly how a lot of it has come from a wounded place. And that doesn't yeah. mean that doesn't mean that I have to totally walk away from it, that I can't move forward with it in some capacity, but it does mean that I shift my perspective on it and I shift my relationship to it. Yep. And I understand that no matter what I choose to do or choose not to do, mm-hmm. I am still worthy and whole. Mm-hmm. All yeah. on me. Yeah. One of the things similar to that, that I have been working through, um, is the feeling special and it's sim- like, I feel like the, the worthiness is like there in a way, but like, I want to feel special for that worthiness kind of thing. I don't know. It's, it's a, and when I was like grieving, you know, people in my life, like, um, an ex and all these things, it was not necessary. I realized it wasn't necessarily the person that I was grieving because it was not a very good relationship, but it was the, the way that I felt special in certain situations that I was wanting. And then I, I started to become aware of in every situation that I was living day to day, where I was wanting to feel special, what I was doing that I didn't want to do or, you know, things like that to feel special for somebody to look at me and think like, wow, she's special. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's the same, the same thing as the worthiness really. Um, But that then like when I came to business and speaking about business, it's the same thing because I looked at all of these people on Facebook and all, you know, all the social medias that have big businesses and are bringing in lots of money and they have a brand, they have, they call themselves something, they have a title, they have a brand, they have the coloring, they have the, this, they have the, that. And I did that at first. 
And I switched it many, many times Mm -hmm. before I realized like, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to have a brand. I want to be my brand. Mm -hmm. I am my brand. I, I know that this healing work that I'm doing in the world is right now just for me. And I'm, I'm bringing it out to the world and showing, bringing my, the, the information that I'm being given to bring forward, I'm bringing forward, but to not focus so much on creating a business because I was doing things that other people were doing that I wouldn't say felt good or bad to me. Some of it felt icky. I left that stuff alone, but then there was other things where it was like, okay, this doesn't really feel bad, but it doesn't feel good. It's just like, why would I do this? And so I, I had to really, along with stripping down all these characters I played, I really had to look at a business that I'm trying to build and say, I'm not meant to bring to the world what this person is and what this person is. And it was like, that's the only way I could see because I was being so hard on myself to build this business. So I was only going by what other people were saying. And when we're constantly going hard on ourselves and being hard on ourselves we're not able to sit back and see what's really good for us we're listening to everybody else because our mind chatter is going crazy that we don't we can't feel into what it is that we really want we can't hear the messages from our higher selves or whatever it is that you call it god the universe Mm -hmm. we can't hear those messages because there's so much going on in our heads Mm -hmm. and it's because The world is telling us we need to be hard on ourselves or we're never going to make it. We need to hustle, 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 or we're never going to make it. And I don't want to do things that way. And maybe it hasn't been done this way before, but I know that I have the power to bring it to the world and to show the world something new and to be, you know, and, but at the same time, not having someone like, not doing it for the reason of, oh my gosh, look at what she's doing. That's so amazing. Like I had to step back from that and be like, yeah, okay. At first I started doing this to be seen and to be heard and um, to be to, for someone to look at me and be like, wow, she really did all of that. Mm-hmm. But in a way of now it's like I had to strip away all of that in order to just do, to be the light and be, you know, and those that want to work with me or that are interested in speaking with me will come to me. And I don't have to put myself on a pedestal and put myself on parade and, you know, for people to, to hear my message. My message is clear to me and what I'm bringing to the world, you know? So it was a very big perspective shift shift in my life in my business in everything that I'm creating in this world and it left it brought a lot of tears and a lot of pain and a lot of you know laying on the floor in a ball crying because who am I Mm -hmm. you know like the world is telling me that if if you're not special you're pretty much nothing Mm -hmm. if you're not you know it's like we've been programmed this way. We've been programmed that we have, we have to be special to someone or something, or we have to have a career that we, that we love. And we have to, it's just all this worldly, (laughs) worldly stuff, man. It's, it's hard to break out of. And I just had to consistently take those sweaters off. and, And then when you're standing there, like raw, yourself authentic you and you're like in the uh, the rest of the world is like she's crazy she's nuts <laughs> if you had to be able to stand there and be like yeah that's fine I don't want your coat I don't want your coat I'm I'm good you yeah. know and it's definitely a journey and yeah. um journaling has been like a huge help for me lately I used to not be a journaler at all and when people tell me, used to tell me to journal I would like roll my eyes because <laughs> it was like the one thing that everybody was like well journal on it journal on it and so I started even shifting the perspective on journaling um, instead of trying to bring in information from my higher self because that's you know 
when I started this journey, it's like, oh, what do you really want? Journal on it. What do you, you know, all these, these journal prompts that I would journal and nothing would, it meant nothing. Mm -hmm. I started doing journaling my way and it totally just changed everything instead of doing what other people were telling me and, and finding journal prompts and doing all these things. I would just do journal, like whatever I'm going through that day, what lessons came to me, Mm -hmm. you know, what, um, guidance did I receive all the things? And now I really enjoy it. (laughs) So again, it's just, it's just breaking away from every thing that we're programmed to be and feel and think that this world, this world is telling us we need to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, (laughs) it's just that sometimes it's just such a simple perspective switch. Yeah. Um, when, when I was having that conversation with the other practitioner about my business, she asked me, you know, why are you doing this? Why did you start doing this? And my initial response was, well, to help other people because I have been through my own journey and I have found um, a degree of healing and success with some very specific things, um, navigating some specific issues and mm-hmm because I have gone through this, I can help other people go through similar things. And she said, well, what if you don't do it for other people? Mm -hmm. What if you, what if you do it for yourself? What if you do it for the version of yourself that needed you? Yeah. What if you do it for the, the version of yourself 10 years ago that was laying in the bed and wanted to die? Yeah. What if you do it for the version of yourself that was five years old and really needed saving? Yes. An entire perspective switch. Yep. And then instead of putting energy out there or content out there or whatever with the energy of see me, hear me, validate me. I can help you. Yep. Instead, it's just, well, I'm doing this for me. Mm-hmm. Whether I'm doing this for the today me or the 10 year younger me or the five year old me, or I'm doing this for the 55 year old me. You know, I'm doing it for me. And just that mindset switch has been very significant. Yes. Yes. And I know like at the beginning of my journey, that was the one thing I was like, I'm going to be a coach. I have to help people. Like they need to see this too. But when I really sat with that and I look at the world and how many people are just wanting to help people, but neglecting themselves, Mm -hmm. a lot of times if you are, are sitting there and you're like, I really need to help people. I need to help people. It's because you need to help yourself first. Mm -hmm. And I, that's where I realized on this journey, when I was trying to be a coach, trying to do it other people's ways and trying to force myself onto people because I can help you. I know I can. Or when someone would come to me with an issue, I'd be like, well, this is what you should do. Instead of saying like, I, I can, I have to help myself first. Mm -hmm. If I help other people, and, and when I did that, I realized all of that is not important. I'm not going to be able to help someone who doesn't want help. And that's what I was doing is forcing my opinion on other people, forcing my views on other people, going on and on and, and arguing with people about my views. But it's like, once you start to learn and step into that power of like, I don't need to make anyone like me. I don't need to help anyone. I don't need to do any of this. The people that want my help, that see my light, are going to come to me. I don't need to force. I don't need to, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just, again, another perspective shift. If It's just all these little perspective shifts, you know, are leading us to exactly where we need to be. And if we really tune into those, you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. It just... It takes, takes time. So yeah, yeah, navigating these big shifts is, can be very difficult. So I'm going to tell you, 
if you're navigating these shifts, just sit with yourself, be with yourself. That is, you are the only person that is going to make, is going to move you forward. Mm -hmm. Nobody's advice is going to move you forward. I mean, maybe you can listen to to the people that you want to, if there's a podcast that you like to listen to, like we, you know, um, they, they may speak something that, that sits with your soul, but if, if something doesn't throw it out, Mm -hmm. you don't, you don't need to follow in the footsteps of someone else. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of getting through. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we, we all, we all have our own answers within us and yes, there are external sources that can spark something or help Mm -hmm. us flip that perspective a little bit. Um, but truly those answers are within us. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to read something because what you were, what you were saying there ties in so well with, um, one of the kind of light bulb moments that I've had, but it was, um, a, a post on Instagram, a human design post encouraged me to look at my moon gate, my conscious moon gate in my chart. Because this, your, uh, your, your moon gate is where your internal motivation comes from. Mm -hmm. So I was encouraged to look at that. And I recently got um, Karen Curry Parker's Encyclopedia of Quantum Human Design. And I really love this book because the definitions are much more uh, easy to understand and friendlier language than the typical definitions that we see in human design, which can be a little bit complex and yeah. So um, anyway, all right. So I have gate 50 in my moon gate, in my conscious moon is gate 50. The optimal expression of this is the ability to nurture yourself so that you have more to give others. The intuition to know what others need to bring, need to bring them into greater alignment with love, to t- teach and share what you have to increase the well being of others. But the unbalanced expression of this is to over care, to let guilt stop you from sustaining yourself. That is a huge uh, <laughs> example of the first 42 years of my life. To hold rigid principles and to struggle to allow others the consequences of their choices. So the lesson is to transcend guilt and unhealthy obligation and to do what you need to do to take care of yourself in order to better serve others. (laughs) So that whole thing of putting yourself first and loving yourself first and not doing it for other people, but doing it for you to begin with, Mm -hmm. that is my internal motivation. But I was living in the unbalanced expression of that for so long. And Mm -hmm. I I have slowly come out of it, but I'm still coming out of it. And I'm still seeing the ways that I am putting other things and people first at my own expense. And I, and I have to flip that around. And, you know, that might mean forget, forget social media today and, and go to Zumba class. Mm -hmm. No, the, the inner child in me, she wants to sing and dance. That's Mm -hmm. all. That's all she wants to do. Sing and dance. And I used to, actually get a a fair amount of fulfillment in that part of being a music teacher because when I've got a classroom full of kindergartners you know Mm -hmm. and I'm just putting on some upbeat music and hand out the rhythm sticks and maracas and yeah you know we're just bebopping around the room acting you know just having a blast and I get to act like a Mm five-year-old that was really nurturing to my inner child and as much as teaching children was very difficult for me having 600 kids come in and out of my classroom every single week that was a lot of energy for my reflector body to handle and so it it really did burn me out but 
there were certain parts of it being with those children and just letting loose with the music that really nurtured me. Uh, and, I, and I've lost that right now. And so it's time to get it back. Yes. So, you know, maybe I need to forget spending two hours on creating some Instagram post that, you know, eight people are going to hit the like button on and just go to Zumba class. <laughs> Yeah. And I feel like that's where the inspiration comes. That's where our creativity, you know, can flow and yeah. 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 So I think that was a good conversation for the day. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. That's uh, it, it's, it has been a significant transit for, for both of us really undoing some deep, deep uh, things and letting some of that ego go. And yep. Re-identifying. Okay. Well, for our listeners and watchers out there, thank you so much. As always, if you want to connect with us, please, you can comment on the video or send us an email. Um, we are happy to converse with you and connect with you. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next thank time. You.